Okay, good morning, everybody. So I played last time. I, 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 I led you when it was all by myself. We played a little game. I always like to try and make some, try, try and make stuff into games. So I'm going to show you a couple of pictures, okay? And all I want you to do is just to say what you see. That's a, it's as simple as that. I'll look at the first picture. If we can get this to, hey, there we are. Okay, what do you see? Yeah. Who's saying shepherd? Put, put your hand up. You said shepherd. That's correct. Nice. Okay. Well done. But shepherd. Okay. What about this? Shepherd? Am I hearing shepherd? I'm hearing shepherd. Yeah, that's right. Shepherd again. What? Uh, next one. Say what you see. It's a dog. That's not. That's that's true. But but do those who are saying German shepherd? Well done. Are you seeing a bit? Of a theme, of a theme happening. Okay, and the next one. Okay, okay. You get bonus points if you can tell me not just what you see, but who you see. Oh, spoilers. <laughs> Who's this? David, the shepherd king. David, the shepherd king. Thank you, Stuart. Yes, that's right. King <laughs> David. What a theological. <laughs> So, why do we have a picture of David? Well, the song that we just sang, so David was a shepherd, okay? That's thing number one. David was a shepherd. He was a shepherd. He was the youngest of his family, and it tended to be that if you were the youngest, put your hand up if you're, hand up if you're the youngest, Are you, yeah? So, back then, the youngest would get the really, the worst the worst jobs, okay? And being a shepherd was a really rubbish job. It was really hard. You were outside all the time, and it was really dangerous, okay? So the Bible tells us that David, okay? So the Bible tells us that David uh, would, you know, in this picture we can see he's probably just a, you know, just a young teenager, and he was fighting lions, you know, with his wrestling lions, keeping them away from the sheep. Um, and he was outside all the time. But he was also, as you can see there, what instrument is okay, which is a type of ancient, uh, an ancient harp. So he was a musician. The song that we sang at the beginning was Psalm 23, which is a song that he wrote. In fact, he wrote more than just 23. There's a whole book in the Bible full of David's, David's songs. And so what does this, what's he, what's he saying? What does he mean when he's saying that the Lord is my shepherd. What does a shepherd mean when he's saying the Lord is my shepherd? Well, let's talk about what a shepherd does. He looks after his sheep. He protects them. He watches over them. If he protects them, he watches over them. If a sheep runs off to the side, in fact, I saw a sheep on the way in who was on the wrong side of the wall. If there was a shepherd there, he would have picked them up and put them on the, on the right side of the wall. Um, so that's what a shepherd does, and that's what God does for us. And David trusted that God would be with him no matter what, and that he would always put him right back on track. And he trusted God so much that you saw a little bit of spoilers. He wasn't even afraid to face up to the mightiest enemies. People, this, this, is, uh, this is Goliath here, this big guy with the spear, guy with the spear, okay? big, big warrior, very, very scary. And uh, all of King Saul's men were absolutely terrified of Goliath. They didn't want to fight him because he was so big. Um, but David trusted that God would be with him, and he faced up to him with his, with his skills, you know, using a sling. He didn't put on a fancy suit of armor, and he didn't take uh, a big sword with him because he didn't know how to use them. He just went in with what he knew, and, and what God had given him, and he defeated Goliath. So as you go into the week, you need to go with the fact and with the knowledge that God is always with you, no matter what. God loves you, God cares for you, and whenever you do wrong, God is going to put you back on the right path. And if you trust in God, it'll all be okay. In God, It'll all be okay. Let's worship by singing 
our next hymn, uh, just setting you up. I will be introducing a couple of little, there's quite a few Argentinian songs in the CH4, uh, and uh, uh, this is one of them. So uh, let's stand and sing, May the God of Hope Go With Us. Richard is going to share with us our reading for today, our next I Am Statement of Jesus. Thank you. The reading is taken from St. John's Gospel, chapter 10, beginning at verse 11. Beginning at verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hard hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he's a hard hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as a father knows, and I lay down my life. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it, up, take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from again. This command I received from my father. The Jews who heard these words were again divided. Many of them said, raving mad, why listen to him? But others said, these are not the sayings of a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open of the blind? Thanks be to God. We sing, are you guys heading out? Yeah, you're going out during this one. We sing again, Spirit of God, unseen as the wind. as the wind. Hey. 
Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasant. The of our hearts be pleasant in your sight. Amen. First, he was bread. Then he was water. Yesterday, he, or rather, yesterday? I must, th- this tells you when I wrote it. Last week, eight. now at least he's stating an actual profession, but which is confusing because I thought that Jesus was a carpenter, but all joking aside, let's really delve into what Jesus means when he said, I am the good shepherd. Being a shepherd is possibly one of the oldest and toughest jobs in history. Sheep herding in modern times takes a lot of skill and a well-trained dog and a clicker. No, I'm joking. Uh, But in biblical times, being a shepherd... Uh, But in biblical times, being a shepherd was was really a full-time job and it was a hard job. You needed a lot of grit to be a shepherd. You weren't just lazing about in a field like that picture of David that we just saw, just playing your harp, having a nice time. You didn't look out for predators. And as I mentioned earlier, David had to fight off lions to keep his flock safe. And not only would you be in, you know, constantly watching, but you would be under constant watch in the hot sun, in the rain, and in the cold nights, protecting your source of meat and wool, things that your life depend on, and you're doing, you're defending those things with your very life. And on top of that, you had to make sure that all your sheep were accounted for, that none of them had gone astray, stopping them from fighting and hurting each other, assisting in hurting each other, assisting in lambing. The list really goes on and on and on and on and on. And frankly, thinking about it, thinking about it is stressing and kind of tiring me out. But being a shepherd in the biblical tradition would develop into something more than just a job. I want you to think back about all the people in the Bible, all the great, amazing, world-changing individuals who were all shepherds. Abraham, Moses, David, the prophet Amos. Being a shepherd became Things. Teaching, 
and leadership. Religious leaders and teachers uh, were often referred to as being like shepherds, in, especially in the Old Testament. In Ezekiel 34, God talks about how he is going to call back and steal away from the bad shepherds. Israel has had a complicated relationship, had a complicated relationship with prophets, the kings and the religious leaders even more so. And it wasn't until a lot later that it wasn't until a lot later what it wasn't until a lot later what's going on i'm all over the place today it wasn't until a lot later that after what the prophets said came to pass that they were then taken seriously and for a long time israel's kings and priests were really looking out for themselves and dragging the people if you want to do some extra homework uh, it's all there in both books of Kings and Chronicles. In this sense, our world today and the biblical world are not so different. Russian people are being dragged uh, to war for the sake uh, to war for the sake of Putin's illusions of grandeur. Populist fervor and single-issue voting are the flavors of the day in America, and. Genocide is being rebranded as self-defense by Israel. And the common thread, thread is that all of this supposedly is being done for the good of the people. I can't believe that. I say no to that. These aren't shepherds. These are hired hands. Men who only care about that they've been told to look after. This isn't just a problem in international politics. This is an issue in the church too, sadly. From sleazy pastors, as we heard last week, who sell you salvation to pastors of megachurches who don't even know. How can a pastor look after his flock or her flock if he doesn't know or she doesn't know all of them by name? It seems that folks would rather chase a flashy shepherd with a flashy suit and designer clothes that can shepherd with a flashy suit and designer clothes that can speak a charismatic message than to be known personally and to be cherished. But since the beginning, we have had a good, let me see if this works. Maybe if I turned it on. There we are. This is one of the oldest depictions of Jesus, which is found in some Roman catacombs from around the second century. Or see him looking much like a typical Roman, Roman male with short hair uh, looking after his sheep. The early Christians knew who the real shepherd, the real good shepherd, shepherd really was. And before that, David, who wrote Psalm 23, whether he wrote it, who wrote Psalm 23, whether he wrote it later in life or as a young boy, no one's really sure. But he knew the identity of a shepherd as well. His rod and staff comfort me. Don't take that comfort for granted because I can tell you that life, not knowing that guidance, it's hard because I, for a very long time, did not know who my shepherd was. I was a lost sheep until that good shepherd yanked me out of whatever ditch I managed to get myself stuck in. Or as on my, I was on my way here, I was probably that sheep who was on the other side of the wall freaking out with cars. Jesus took me out of that darkness, that depression, and put me back on the right path again. This isn't an experience that has left me, and I don't take for granted it will stick with me for the rest of my days. And I will always preach this to know, and I will always preach this to know that he is my shepherd, to know he is looking out for me and that he cared enough to go out of the way to save me gives me a feeling that I can't begin to put into words. It's truly life changing. And he's not just my shepherd, he's your shepherd too, too. He is our good shepherd who is with us 
all of our days, and he knows us all so incredibly well, much better than we probably know ourselves. But what I find baffling from today's reading is what comes in at the end, is how people can see what Jesus has done, who he is, what he says, and say that he is a demon. Still baffles me today. You know, you know the people that say that they don't want anything to do with this Jesus stuff. Why? Why do you not want anything to do with this Jesus stuff? In a way, nothing to do with this Jesus stuff. In a way, they kind of remind me of Shrek the Sheep. Now, of Shrek the Sheep, he was a merino sheep who didn't like to be sheared. So he ran away and he lived in a cave for about six years. So that's the, uh, that's, that's the result of six years of not getting sheared. That's what they look like. And they do need sheared because their wool just keeps growing and growing and growing. It doesn't stop. And to think about it, it seems it's comical. It's almost ridiculous. But this sheep is in a sorry state. I couldn't find good pictures of him sheared, but we can agree this isn't a healthy looking sheep. And if he went any longer without being sheared, it would have undoubtedly killed him. We know a couple of people like this, don't we? And if you don't, well, you, you know at least one person who was like this. Because Shrek and I had a lot, we have a lot in common. Uh, we were both found. That's the other thing that we have in common. So, what can we take the other thing that we have in common? So, what can we take from today's I am statement? Well, there's a few things I want you to think about. A reassurance, first of all. The Good Shepherd is with, is with us in all our days. He is with us in our highest and in our lowest moments. But most importantly, God cares about us. He cares about Killarn Kirk. And he cares about Killarn. He cares for every single one of you here. And he loves those who actively loves those who actively seek, seek him and who run towards him. And I want to leave you with a couple of questions to think about and to take with you into the week. Do you know a Shrek in your life? Someone who actively runs away and avoids anything to do with Jesus. It's difficult because people have complex reasons and hurts that have been caused by either the church or people in it. We should take those bad shepherds around. I just think that they probably just need a gentle reminder that there is a good shepherd and that we happen to know that good shepherd. I'd now like to invite Dory. Oh no, my bad. We're going to sing a song before we do the prayer. Um, there was a lot of confusion. People, there was a lot of confusion. People were going, "You put the Lord Shepherd in twice, Julian." Was that? Did you mean that? I'm like, yes, I did mean that. That that was meant. And the reason is, is that the first song that we sang, first, "The Lord's My Shepherd," quite old, very very old, you know. This. Very, very old, you know. This is a slightly more modern rendition. The reason I wanted to include those is that the Lord has always been your shepherd. From way, way back then, from before you were even born. The Lord was your shepherd, and the Lord is your shepherd. We trust him fully, unconditionally, and we trust him alone. That's really what I wanted to drive with this today. So let's stand and let's sing The Lord's My Shepherd I'll Not Want.
We all have our eccentricities. We all have our eccentricities, and I have more than most. And one of them is, as many of you will know, I quite like you to help me in the prayer. So I often punctuate my prayer with the words, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And if you want to say don't, it's absolutely fine. I hang up from my Scottish Episcopalian days. So... Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. So I think with these comforting words, let us pray. Good shepherd, all we face and experience, never leave us or forsake us and journey with us always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, you know us as no one else knows us. God, as you guard and keep those whom we love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, we pray for the sick and lonely, for the anxious and the bereaved, for those whose pain is beyond our, comprehe beyond our comprehension. We stand with them and commend them to your care. In a moment's silence, Good Shepherd, we bring before you the individual names of those known to us personally who need your arms to wrap around those known to us personally who need your arms to wrap around them and hold them securely in your love. Lord, hear our prayers of love and concern for those around us, for those we have just brought before you in our moment of silence. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, we pray for the carers in hospital and in homes and for all who serve the needs of others. May the example of living compassion inspire us. May the example of living compassion inspire us in our care for others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, you know us by our name, and our identity is not hidden from you. Gather yourself as a shepherd gathers the sheep, that we might know your name. Heavenly Father, our world needs your help to save us. Near and far, there is unrest in numerous corners of your world, all initiated by Daily, we see pictures on our television screens showing the utter devastation which war brings. Scenes of buildings reduced to rubble, many of all ages killed. Dear Lord, we wit the utter despair, the righteous anger on the faces of those who survive. Life for them will never be the same no matter what reparation is made. For the leaders of all warring nations, we for the leaders of all warring nations, we earnestly pray for wisdom, for empathy, and for a wholehearted desire to care for each other as Jesus taught us to do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all politicians throughout the world, that they will govern with wisdom, honesty, and a desire to make things better for all. We remember our friends in the USA facing presidential elections on Tuesday. We pray that the election will result to be accepted with grace by both sides. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we remember today all those in Spain who suffered so greatly when the devastating flood came pouring down on them. Father, we know that climate change has been caused by our own mistakes. Help us all to see that the solution to this ever-increasing problem lies firmly in our own hands Lord, in your mercy, hear. All glory be to your name, Good Shepherd. You are love, and we pray that your love would mark our lives today and every day. God, we pray that you would help us to love you with all our heart, all our soul, and to love others as ourselves. Enable us to do the hard work of love with one another that the world may know us as yours and that they may come to see you as Lord of all and their good shepherd. As Lord of all and their good shepherd. Let us pray with the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done as it is in heaven. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We conclude our morning's worship singing together, Tell Out My Soul, The Greatness of the Lord. Oh.
so go. Let your soul sing in all the places that God puts you. Be it echo his name to the sheep that he's calling. Draw them in. Come into the fold. For the good shepherd is your shepherd. And you are theirs. So go in his grace. Go in his mercy. Go in his love. Go in his joy. Go in his love. Go in his joy. And be his sheep. Now and always.